Live from the Slackers Sports Bar Studios, this is In the Building with Mike Taylor and Rudy J. Well, look at that. What up, what up, what up? Still alive. No, I haven't talked to y'all. Nobody has secretly died from pancreatic cancer. They're all back. Is that what it was? I think so. No, it's cancer. I didn't know. Look at that. Is it pancreatic? That's the death sentence. Oh, no, was it prostate? I'm not sure. Oh, it was prostate. They must have caught it late. Because that's very, you know, fixable. Should if be. If you catch it early. Should be. If you catch it early. Right. You know what I mean? No. He didn't catch it early. Who are we talking about? OJ. Oh. Yeah. We're back, bitches. It's episode 61 times we've done this. Now. 61? Well, yeah, this is it. Episode 61. Damn. Yeah. Y'all have a good weekend? Everybody good? Uh, What'd you do? We didn't talk at all, I don't think. I know. Did we miss m- no. message once? I don't mean I don't love you. No, no, I know. I everybody got everybody got stuff to do. Everybody's Dude. busy. Uh, no, what did I do this weekend? I didn't do, what, Saturday I did a little day party. Best kind. Day, day at our age. Best. Yeah, day drinks are the best drinks. In bed by 9, 10 o'clock. Yeah. You know and you're I mean? not hung over the next day. Oh. You have time. Well. I was tired yesterday. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Friday, no man, didn't do anything but day party. Watch the Masters. It's Masters weekend. I watch a lot of golf on ma- on major weekends. <sighs> this is awful because I like golf. You didn't and watch I'm, a second. I, no, yeah, I did. Oh. I did. Yeah, yeah. I kept going. I was at the missions game and kept going back up to the press box to watch golf. Oh, okay. I'd run down, have to do my little yuck thing, run back up, golf back down. Getting your steps. But this may be. Well, I don't give a shit. Even though he's a Longhorn and he's from Texas. It was the most boring Masters ever. He's the most boring, oh, great oh, player yeah, he of my lifetime. He is boring. I really need somebody else to challenge Scotty Scheffler. It's great that he's winning. He's he's dominant. That's two, but he's two, a master, great, he's two a, Masters in three years. Yeah, he's a great, big, giant, tall drink of white-ass milk, man. I need I need character. But you know what's crazy about that, though? I, I thought, like, if anybody could accept boring i thought it would be the people of san antonio our five titles are boring. look at you no they're not they're not boring you see what i'm saying and i would get mad now and see and i would think we haven't talked in two days and we're gonna have a fight already i would think scheffler's people would tell you he's not boring you just don't know him that's what we used to say about Tim. you're saying tim duncan's boring i'm saying the spurs and spurs are not boring 
And at that time, if Manu Ginobili had been a fucking Nick, I'm not yelling at you. I know. Had Manu been a Nick, he'd be known as one of the most flashy, inter, one of the most entertaining players of all time. El Contusion, behind the back passes and through the legs and nutmegging motherfuckers. So Manu, is, was, so the mo- Manu was the 20 most electrifying players of his time. Was Tim Duncan boring? No. Because I love <laughs> basketball. And I love <laughs> oh golf. God. Scheffler, personality-wise, is boring. And Michael Taylor. And Tim isn't. But the Spurs had guys around him. And maybe we're comparing individual sports to team, too. Right. The Spurs always had characters. Bruce Bowen was scissor kicking dudes in the fucking head. Whoa, whoa, I didn't do anything. What are you talking about? Right, right, right. That was great. Right. You know, we got Steven Jackson in there literally getting thrown off the team three days before a playoff game because he's bitching over Danny Green's playing time or whatever. They had characters. The face of the franchise was stoic. That's true. But the Spurs weren't boring. It's like, that's, I guess that's become one of my Emmett Smith things. You know, I get, I get pissed when people tell me Emmett was overrated. Now, I guess people tell me the Spurs were boring. I get pissed. Well, I shouldn't. Geez. I shouldn't. Who cares? But, hey, who I, cares? I stuck, but they were. Because yeah, I love them. They were not boring. But they wanted to be boring. They ex, they they in, embraced that. Like, we don't beat our chest. We don't scream they after did. we dunk. Yeah, they did. We don't celebrate. They did. We expect to win. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know what I mean? It wasn't, I agree. And the Cowboys always it gave show, me that. It wasn't, it wasn't Magic and James. It wasn't Showtime. The, the Spurs were that your good kids. That was exciting. Kid. You know, they always say this. It's like parents make a great mistake. We, we always tend to pay more attention to the kid that's kind of a screw up. Right. And we take the good kid for granted. And we shouldn't do that, honestly. No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Oh, this meho here, he's got all A's. Right. He's on the honor roll. He he's gonna go to college. He has a summer job. Then I got this other dumbass here who's I gotta give him riddling every day. Right. He's crossing out the teacher. He's getting into trouble. So I spend all of my energy with him when I fuck the bad kid. I should give this good, <laughs> boring kid who does what he's supposed to do more love right. than I should. It's like parenting with fandom. And the the Cowboys if you're a Spurs slash Cowboys fan, I'm listening. You took the Spurs for granted, yes, because we're so bogged down in the Cowboys bullsh when we shouldn't. Have, we we should have appreciated Tim Duncan even more so. I think so too. Than we should have. But I think because he was so good, we we've, we've held on to that standard a little too long. Maybe, but I like Maybe. to be entertained too. It is if it's my team, win the title. I don't care if you're boring or not. Just win the title. But if you're not going to win the title, at least entertain me. Is all I'm saying. I li- I do like character and flavor and entertainment value. You know. I'm just saying. Um, as a basketball, but purist, Scotty Scheffler does nothing for me as a fan. Now, an outside. Let's uh, let's put yourself in somebody from. I don't know Oregon. Okay. They didn't. They didn't. They weren't rushing to their TVs to watch the Spurs play the beautiful game, even though to us it was like two, 2014 was far from boring as a basketball purist. It was some of the best basketball I've ever seen played. Can't help stupid. I can't help you, the guy in Oregon who's too stupid to appreciate greatness. And I, and I would say that's on same, him. And I would say the same about Scotty. His <laughs> iron, his iron play, do. his yeah. iron yeah. play yeah. is some of the best we've seen in a long time. Now. No, I, he's amazing. He's fantastic. He's now clearly the best player in the world. He already was. Right. And you know, Jordan Spieth, has, his head's gone up his ass so far. I don't know he'll be able to ever get it back. He's so terrible now. Um, Brooks is too busy playing over <laughs> playing on the live tour. I don't get to see him as much. And Brooks Kepka's not as good. Bryson DeChambeau has entertainment value. Brooks Kepka entertains me. I wish those. I wish DeShambo and Brooksy would be one Ooh, and two like at the Masters. Well, this, <sighs> but no, Scotty's awesome. He is. He's just a big old tall drink of milk, and I'm and, and, it's, <laughs> and so I guess I'm being a little bit hypocritical because I defend Timmy, but I'm a Spurs fan. Right. This is an individual sport too. You know, we like that's why we well, like the flary boxer. See, we I, like that. We like the animated tennis player. When it comes to individual sports. It helps if the guy who's better than everybody has got some fucking attitude and character like Tiger used to. See, and that's what makes – that's why we got to appreciate Tiger's run more. Yeah. Because none of these guys have the – if they all have game, but they don't have in between the ears what Tiger had to do it that long. Like, Scott is going to have his run, and then he's going to go through some mental shit. 
We saw it with Rory. We saw it with Brooks. We saw it with Spieth. Y'all could go down the list of all these guys that have this two, three-year run where they're like, oh, my God, we finally got the guy. And the next mm-hmm. thing you know, he's Jordan Spieth or he's Brooks Kepka shooting plus nine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the, what Tiger did, you just got to put that. What well, Tiger and Jack yeah, yeah, it's done, not fair. Put that yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Put that over there. But I've had this thing with Spurs fans for forever, especially the Spurs fans like yourself that are Cowboy fans. Because, see, with the Spurs, own a character and don't beat your chest and don't curse and don't go to jail. But then you loved the White House. You loved Michael Irvin being high of coke and sleeping with whores. Like, I don't, I never understood that. Like, with those the Spurs, women had names, sir. With those, okay, you're right. <laughs> but, you know, with the Cowboys, it's like, I don't give a damn. Just win. But then with your Spurs, you're like, no, be nice and talk to elementary schools and right. don't be like Steven Jackson. Don't smoke weed and say you're better than Danny Green. But right. then with the Cowboys, like, I don't give a damn. Just win. Sure. I never understood that. Well, I will take boring Cowboys if it means they win the title. I'm cool with that. Like I said, if you're not go try to win the championship right. every year or at least be doing things that eventually lead to a championship, which I believe the Spurs are currently doing. Mm-hmm. But if you're not going to win the championship, then entertain me along the way because there's a lot of games that don't matter. So entertain me. Try to entertain me if you're not going to win. Now, if you win and you're entertaining, like the 90s That's Cowboys, it's, 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 just it's a, a bonus for everybody. <laughs> right. There's love for everybody. Right, right, right. Uh, Scheffler bores me. He bores me, too. And maybe that makes but me But I hypocrite. respect I the know. game. I re- I, I'm with you. We're actually agreeing. We're just yeah, saying it in yeah. different ways. Yeah. I respect his game a yeah. lot. And maybe, and, and here's the thing, since we brought up Tim, Tim's makeup, his mental comportment, mm-hmm. small island kid, chill, we're just hanging. He had to be that in order to maximize his ability. Had Tim gotten caught up in bullshit, he wouldn't have, he he couldn't. If Tim was going to be what Tim was, that's the that was the version he needed to be of himself. And Scotty Scheffler, like Scotty all of a sudden can't start going to T bars. <laughs> he can't he can't turn into Dustin Johnson and he's doing blow off women's bodies or whatever. Why not? Sorry, Dustin Johnson. Why not? Because it'll affect his game. There's oh, another gotcha. guy who's got character and he's got off the field stuff that's interesting and his game's gone to shit. Dustin Johnson. He's disappeared. Well, that Maybe live Scotty, money. A lot of those live guys have disappeared. Right. But yeah, I Scotty got Scotty has to be the tall drink of white milk, no quick, no chocolate, no strawberry, straight up white glass of milk. If he's going to be winning Masters, that's who he is. So credit Scotty. He, he's he's yeah, 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 sure. this is who I am. I'm kind of a chill, straight laced dude. Mm-hmm. But because I'm that chill, straight laced dude, I've now won two Masters, and I'm what? What is he? Twenty six. Yeah, young dude. Not young, even young so dude. Good on him. But to answer your question, I was more. I, I'm to the point now where I would still rather watch Tiger shoot eighty than watch Scotty Scheffler shoot sixty three. Oh, and that and that sucks. No, no. It, I mean, I'm being honest. No, no, no. You know what? And yeah. golf hasn't figured that out. Mm-hmm. Golf has to figure out where does the interest come from outside of the guys like myself that are going to watch no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we get LG? How do we get, I'm not, and I don't even know if LG watches golf or not. I'm just saying, how do we get the people that don't give a shit about golf to care like we did with Tiger? They haven't figured that out. NBA, Michael Jordan quits, Kobe comes. Kobe Mm -hmm. quits, here comes LeBron. LeBron quits, here comes whoever. Here comes Wimby. Yeah. NFL, Tom Brady's gone. Here comes Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Golf has yet to figure that out. I, and men's tennis. Men's tennis, we don't give a shit about the men's tennis in America because we haven't we haven't got our Agassi, we haven't got our Sampras. We haven't mm-hmm. figured that out yet. And golf and tennis, they're in a, a conundrum because, again, like you, a lot of the world would rather watch Tiger sweat through that Sunday red shirt like he been ran a damn marathon. That material is shit. Um <laughs> You didn't like the new the new shirt. I like, the, I like it, but I'm like, <laughs> damn, what kind of material are y'all using? Nobody else look. Tiger yeah. looked like he had done a Navy SEAL training exhibition. Mm-hmm. I was like, what kind of material are y'all giving the goat? But anyway, there's millions that would rather watch Tiger go plus sixteen mm-hmm. than watch Scotty win his second ma- second Masters mm-hmm. in three years. And that's I don't know how they fix that. We thought it was going to be Rory. We thought it was going to be Speed. Mm-hmm. No golf can't fill that void. 
Well, which is probably the reason why after two years of saying, ugh, the live or eat, that's, that's evil core. Right, right, How right. disgusted we are by that. You know, maybe we should pair up with them. <laughs> so, <laughs> now the PGA is uh, they're on the brink of forming an, an, an alliance because they right. realize that we've got to get some character back. Ricky Fowler was a guy that I was really hoping would take that next level and start winning majors and become one of those mega stars because Ricky's got he's, I like Ricky because he's got attitude. He's got swagger. I like guys with swagger. But I guess when it comes to an invitational golf tournament, while yeah, it's great. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler won. I'm the kind of guy that I, if I go to, I say I went to Augusta, I would follow guys that I liked that had character, even if they didn't win the tournament, maybe they finished 39th, but I would rather sit there and follow Ricky Fowler because I think he's a cool dude than Scotty <laughs> Scheffler, who's going to kiss his mama, and that's about it, you know, when, when the tournament's over. He probably went to bed by 8.30 last well, night, it, read, the, read, read, read some scripture at 8 and... Crashed out by 8.30 well, the thing is, with I, a muscle milk. They thought that he may leave. <laughs> Shout out to his wife. Who, Scheffler? Because his firstborn. Oh, they thought yeah, he might yeah. leave. And I bet sex with Scotty Scheffler sucks. Jesus. That's how I'm going to start marking my future. Anybody <laughs> I'm a fan of, Which, I'm going to start looking at guys and say, I bet he's a boring lay. You think he, he cries? But I can't be a fan of him. You think he him. cries during missionary? Maybe. <laughs> Make sure all the lights are out. <laughs> Are you crying? He's 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 studying Yo, he's studying man, golf char- he's studying don't golf charts like while that, she's trying no. to have sex with him. That man has two green jackets. Don't do that. Yeah, but he ain't he ain't no good in the bed. Gold we'll the, jacket. We'll green see, jacket. Now, Scotty's Ricky not, Fowler can fuck. Scotty ain't like you and I. You and I, we're smashing in the green jacket. Yeah, you know what I for mean. For sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, butt yeah. naked with the green jacket right. on. Phil Mickelson. Wore the green jacket to the fast food yeah. restaurant and ordered food with his yeah. kids wearing the jacket yeah. like a badass. That's <laughs> Say what you want about Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson's got flair. He's got yeah. a reason for me to care about him. I, uh, there's only so many waking hours in the day. Right. We're f- super busy. Right. If I'm going to stop down and pay attention to you, I'm going to need you to entertain me or we can't be friends. And so I'm going to start looking at guys, and that's going to be my new theory. So I'm, I have a major lay. announcement this morning. Our, what is it? Going forth. Okay. My future fandom. Is abs- uh, upon any new players coming into sports. Okay. If you appear to be a boring lay, I'm not going to be a fan of you. <laughs> if you look like you'd be a thrasher in the in the bed, that's my dude. Okay. Ricky Fowler can smash. Jordan Spieth, he can't smash. What about Sheffer right, don't smash. I got one for you. John Rahm can all smash. Right. Wim- Brooks Kepka Wim- smashes. Wim- Wimbenyama, all right? That's a good test because he plays for my team. Yeah, can he smash, though? I bet he can smash. Get out of here. A He's a young dude. Seven five. Yeah, I know. Don't you want to see that, though? <laughs> no. Because he's seven five. <laughs> no. Doesn't a part of you want to see Wimby do porn? No. Don't Hell you want to no. see what that looks I'm like? I'm good, Mike. I'm not good. I need to see that. No, I'm, Magnum <laughs> Don. I'm supporting that kid because he's a spur and he's an alien. No, exactly. So he's different. There, there's a caveat. If you play for the San Antonio Spurs, good. it's fine. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah, you. yeah. They could bring in Billy Graham's grandson. If he can play point guard and help Wimby go to the championship, <laughs> that's great. So the Spurs don't count. I'm talking about if I'm going to watch the NBA playoffs are about to start. And, and look, I know they you're look excited. excited. They excited. do look cool. They look excited. I can't. I have no idea who's going to win. Who thought the fucking Thunder would be the number one seed? Not that Thanks young. Thanks to the Spurs, who got hot and looked good, and I feel good going into the offseason. Right. Beat them Nuggets with Jokic. Cost them the number one seed. That was a great game. About that. The Thunder, I like the way they finished one. the season. So that being said, Go ahead. my team is not in the playoffs. No. If I'm going to spend my beautiful, precious hours... Watching NBA playoffs. And playoff putting on games. the yellow jacket and going to sit courtside. That's right. They do not involve my team. Right. I'm going to need some entertainment value. From that's you. fair. Yeah. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, that's it. So I'm rooting for the most entertaining teams. Ooh. I like I, I I really feel like the face of the league, and I know Wimby's going to be coming for that soon. I feel like the guy that really has the opportunity with these playoffs to become one of the faces of the league is Anthony Edwards. He Hope has so. a smile. Can he his do that in Minnesota? His, his interview. Well, this is the thing. They're gonna have to go and they're trade trade cat. Get him another, get him another guy to go alongside him. You don't need cat. You don't need him. Mm-hmm. Go get him another star for cat and let let Anthony Edwards take over. 
But I think with the smile, the game, mm-hmm. the interviews, the, the superstar ability, I don't know about all these, you know, Fun, fun kids he, that you know he's allegedly having on the side, but that, you know what? He has entertainment see, value just went up. See, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited can for the NBA smash playoffs. Yeah, that I'm a you? fan. Oh, Tiger and could smash. Can... Tiger well, smashed all. He smashed on and off the links. Well, he would see the problem with Tiger. He was a late bloomer. He was too busy hitting golf balls. So when he finally got r- realized he was Tiger and started well, knocking everything down, yeah, he went a little wild. I love it. Didn't prevent him from winning 18 majors though. So good for him. The mo- the most entertaining part of yesterday's round because what was that? I'm having to watch Scotty Scheffler look like he's about <laughs> he to won't fall even asleep. Smile. Yeah, he won't even smile. It's like it's weird. At least he grew a beard. He's got something different about him. Right. The, what I I don't know if you saw this. I did have a so at 16. Here's Tiger Woods. He's having the worst round of his entire career at Augusta. He just wants to get the thing over Sweating with. Sweating profusely like Sweating Patrick Sweating profusely Ewing. through his new, Sunday apparently red. shitty new it's clothing shitty. brand he started with whoever it was who was not Nike it's anymore. Sunday Red. Sunday Red. He takes the time to walk over and shake the hand and have a quick chat with the great Vern Lundquist. I saw that. But from behind the tree. You've seen all the memes, Yeah, Vern right? was posted up behind the tree. Yeah, yeah. Because that's because Vern, yeah. Vern being Vern, he found, a, he found a spot to cover the hole and get out of the way. The great Vern Lundquist, Austin Zone, Vern Lundquist. I saw your tweet about this. The legendary Vern Lundquist, former radio play-by-play voice of the Cowboys. Uh, that was his last Masters yesterday. So I was interested in Tiger and Vern Lundquist calling his last hole That's over a, that Scotty is, F and Sheffler. That is a huge problem for the PGA. It makes me want to fart and go to sleep. Shout out to Vern. All my buddies wanted to be Roger Clemens or right. Magic Johnson or Don Mattingly in the 80s. I wanted to grow up and be Vern Lundquist because mm. I was that nerdy kid. I was the want to be broadcaster dude. So anyway, shout out to Vern, and I, that was that was entertaining. <laughs> I had to suck it up a little bit because I had I was, I was in the middle of the. Were race you in your base. feelings? Big time, dude! I wow. love Vern Lundquist. That's Tiger F and Woods, and that was a badass moment, you know. Because Tiger, be, Tiger being Tiger, I you know he's he just wants to get the hell out of there without breaking a club because he's pissed. But he in the middle of that horrible round goes over and has a moment with Vern. That was really classy of Tiger and good on both of them. That was yeah. badass. It was super cool. So anyway. Good week. How was the missions weekend? How, was, really the, how good. was your first week with the missions? I will tell you, but first, let me plug something. Let's plug it. Y'all want to see this show in person? Y'all want to see do. the best podcast or r- regardless of whatever digital, you call radio, it. whatever the platform? Let's do it. You want to see the best show in this city? Two dudes who smash on and off the air? Yes, we do. I got the four kids to prove it. I got the three. <laughs> I'm ready to plow. Seven kids between two of us. Yeah, well, don't yeah. you got to count LG's two that he don't know about? Yeah, he well, has two kids. Probably somewhere. at least. I and the fact you. that he's they might not, not be in this country, but and the fact he that he's not kids. sure makes it cooler and more entertaining. I promise he has two kids. Uh, you want to see this show live and in person? Then we invite everybody in this city to show up to Slackers Medical Center location this Saturday. It's Slackers Week, the official studio home. Of in the building, we are going to go to them. Normally, they're here they're representing our studio. We're going to go to their location physically in the flesh this Saturday. It happens to be 420. Just this so happens. Saturday. It's just coincidental. Rudy and I. Texas is still illegal, but it's just 420. We'll be doing a live broadcast of in the building Saturday at Slacker's Medical Center location, which the physical address is 7959 Fredericksburg Road. We will be doing our show from 3 to 5. Yes. 3 to 5. Yes. This Saturday. Uh, they got a massive crawfish boil going on all day long. Us. They got DJs all day long. They got the fight on Saturday night, the pay-per-view fight. You don't have to pay for You, you pay one fee and you get into the building. So how do you get in the building to see in the building? It is $20 at the gate. At the door. However, All you can eat. That's right. Crawfish. However, Fat. <laughs> show up to any one of the five slackers in the area, including the medical center, before Saturday, and you can get a wristband that'll get you in with all the all you can eat and all that stuff for fifteen dollars. So it's twenty at the door Saturday, or fifteen if you go before Saturday and buy your wristband before then. So come see in the building on Saturday. Yeah, it's gonna be saying, a fun time. Oh, my weekend. 
Yeah, with the, well, how was your first week with the missions? Really, really cool. I saw pictures. I'm going to post a picture of you on the Jumbotron. You look nice and svelte hair. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Are that. Are the nerves gone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's funny because I still get the So the way it worked, last Tuesday was my first missions game doing, in. for those that don't know, I, I'm working for the missions this season, doing the in-betweening, in-between inning giveaways, doing races with fans and Sweet tea, sweet tea drinking contest and kiss me cam the shuffle. Yeah, Haven't had any kiss me cams yet. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, and so last Tuesday, I shadowed Denise, who has been doing that for nine years. That's 10 crazy. Years. But Denise is seven months pregnant, and she needs to scale back. She can't be doing every night. Damn sure can't be doing these Sunday afternoon games. It was hot yesterday. So yeah, Denise has scaled back. So I'm going to fill in for Denise on nights where she can't do it, and when her baby comes. She gonna have some maternity leave. Yeah, she's gonna take the rest of the season off, probably. I understood. And so, so I'm gonna be doing every other. Whenever Denise can't do it, I'm gonna do it, and it could be. We'll see. It just it's gonna be week to week, depending on how she feels. But when that baby's getting close, she's gonna go ahead and take a leave of absence, and I'll wind up doing it every night. So anyway, I shadowed Denise Tuesday. On Wednesday, she threw me out there and let and made me do two different things, which was good. I felt like a kid that got called up that was making his major league debut as a reliever. I didn't consider that a full blown start because I came in late, did yeah, a couple yeah, of yeah, innings. Yeah. But then on Thursday, she's like, I ain't working tomorrow night, it's all you. So I, I made my first my first start where I did all innings Thursday. So I did Thursday and Friday. Uh took Saturday off because and Denise did Saturday night. And then I did yesterday. So by yesterday, I still was a little bit nervous before the game. But it was a good kind of nervousness, like okay, because I'm in the public, people are looking at me. Don't mess up, blah, blah, you know. Do the I didn't like do mouth exercises, but make sure you you yeah. speak clearly, and go out there and do your thing. And honestly, it became I don't want to say it's now second nature already, but after one home stand, I got it. We good. So we good during a nine inning game. How mm-hmm. many hits you have? Yeah, it it varies. Uh, usually it's. About six. Well, that's not bad. Or seven. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I normally don't do anything until after the second inning is over. Gives everybody a chance to settle in, watch baseball for get two innings. Get hot dogs, get your beers, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Show up, and then after the second inning, then we start doing in-between inning bits. You know, Normally, it's we, I stand on top of the dugout, do a little shuffle, You know, follow the credit card in the wallet. You know, and if, you, <laughs> if you get it right after the shuffle, you win a prize from Capital One or there's a Whataburger Fry Shuffle, Bill Miller's Sweet Tea. It's minor league baseball. So the marketing that is required, the promotional that is required for minor league baseball is badass. Yeah, I love it. And so it's a lot of fun. So it's super fun. Had a good week. Thank you for asking. Appreciate you. Shout out to a guy called Mickey Holt. Mickey is my primary boss, and he's been awesome, holding my hand, patient with my mistakes. One is he night, a Holt Holt? Not that. Uh, it's oh, a okay. different Holt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, different Holt. Um, one night I missed my mark. What do you mean your mark? Where you were supposed to stand? No, it was no, it was time for me to do a bit, and you were watching the masters. They went to me, and I I didn't I forgot I, I lost track of what inning it was, Mike, and I missed it. That was on Friday night. <laughs> Are you? Serious? No, that was Thursday. My first night by myself. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I lost track <laughs> of the game, and they went down to me. And I was so what not did you ready. Say? Nothing. They bailed out. They just went back to music and then went to the <laughs> inning. But we made up for it the next. It's, got, it's, it's a sponsored. Yeah, gig. you got to get. You got to. But you got to fill it. And so the next inning, we just did it the next. I don't think the fans knew, but no. the booth knew. I knew, and it was. And it was a flawless debut. It was my because Thursday was my first night to do it alone. Right. Flawless until the point where I forgot did to. Did everybody do it. make fun of you? They knew <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, which good. is great. It's good. It was more of a funny thing than a you're oh, in trouble yeah, it's thing. Fine. At the end of the day, and what's and Mickey's real cool is like, dude. At the end of the day, I mean, we get the sponsor in. Yeah, but but it's also it's baseball game, man. We're fine. Just be you. Do your thing. And I that yesterday I was ad libbing more, leaving off going. Off. I've already had Thunderdomers want me to do stupid bits. I can't do dumb bits. That's not in the building. I can do. I can. Sl- so you haven't took off your I shirt. Can, yet. I haven't taken my shirt off. If we win the title, we will, we win the league title. I may go shirtless. Okay, cool. What are they going to do? Fire me? It's the last game of the year. You know? Right. So that's it. Have good a good stuff. week. Thank you to the missions. Been fun. Lots of Thunderdomers. 
Really? And lots of people that didn't didn't really know who I was and wanted to know, where's Denise and who are you? <laughs> but it's been cool. I've been able to introduce myself and... Mike Taylor, Jr., second base. Promote in the building. So that's it. It's a great week. Good job. Good week. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, it is time for the Punch of the Day presented by the Law Office of Orlando Kell, the official family lawyer of In the Building. You guys got a punch today? It's been two or three days since we last talked. Surely somebody somewhere in this world has pissed you off, and if you could, you would punch him in the face. Not real. But no, I wouldn't really punch anybody in the if face. If you could do it and get away with it, which I think the city ought to set that up. So my buddy Josh, the firefighter, sent me what he say? a text this morning, some blank hole over the weekend. So my buddy Josh, the firefighter from Animal House, number nine, He's cruising down the highway. He's off duty. He's in his pickup truck, and he's pulling a trailer with a lawnmower on it, like a John Deere rider. Some idiot wasn't paying attention, smashed into the back of Josh's trailer, scissor-tailed the trailer from the truck. Total, my butt, Josh just paid the truck off. Totals the pickup truck. Josh is okay. Totals the truck. Totals the trailer. Totals the lawnmower. The guy that hit him that wasn't paying attention has no insurance and has a suspended driver's license. And, like, we should have a rule where the city allows you to punch that person in the face. Just once. Just just get it over with. You deserve it. Yeah. And we move on without, you know, fear of retribution. See, that sucks because now, be cool? now he has to pay the deductible if, unless he has uninsured. If he doesn't have uninsured motors, he's coming out of pocket now. Is whereas, norm, whereas normally the other yeah. person would have yeah. to pay your deductible, yeah. and you know. And what sucks the most is the truck just got paid off, sucks. and if it's totaled, now you got to pick up a whole new car payment. Totally sucks. Absolutely sucks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, so punch that asshole who hit my buddy Josh. <gasps> um, anybody you don't want to punch? I don't have a punch. Okay. I, I got another one. I can make up for it. LG. Yeah, LG. He hasn't punched anybody in a week. I know. I got a punch. Here Uh-oh. we go. I, okay. I want to punch the Tour de France. What the hell? The, or- what the, did they the do organizers of the Tour de France. What happened? They threw a bike race in San Antonio on Sunday called Le Etape. Okay. Sponsored what? by the Tour de France. Okay. Okay. And all Sunday morning and into the afternoon, they decided to shut down all entrances to UTSA campus on UTSA <laughs> Boulevard. All entrances from 1604, and then the city, or TxDOT, also had I-10 and 64 interchange shut down. So I couldn't get to the softball game. I had to literally wait for like 3,000 bicycles to go by. I sat at a red light, and cops just held traffic for literally 30 minutes before I was allowed to enter the campus. There was only one entrance, and it was a La Cantera entrance by UTSA. I had to get there, too. Which was impossible. I had to go all the way down to Camp Bullis Road, take the turnaround, because I couldn't cut through where I-10 and 1604 intersect, and then go through La Contera, the back way, to get to UTSA campus. It was ridiculous. So, Because it was already an ass whip because of the construction. Exactly. And then they shut down all entrances to the UTSA campus wow. except for That's one. That's on UTSA, which was, too. For no, it's not. This. It's on the city. Oh, well, okay. You're well, right. Whoever, yeah. right. You know what? You're Bunch right about that. No, the, bi- the cyclists right didn't there. roll through the <clears throat> campus. They just blocked all the entrances. Let's start right there. I don't look. Ron Nuremberg is a friend of this show. We endorse Ron's campaign every every election cycle. He's a longtime Thunderdumber, former radio man, former guest of this show. I don't know if it's his fault or not. I don't know. It, you can't all be on one man. And we all know that TxDOT's got as much political power in Texas as the fucking NRA. But our city looks weak the way we have allowed TxDOT to rape us for a, the better part of a decade. Explain. It's unreal. The lockdown scene that's now going on six months. Yes. Every weekend except for Easter and maybe Christmas or New Year's it's Eve. It's awful. The 1604 I-10 interchange lockdown sitch is outrageous. I know you got to. I know you have to. I know we have to build new bridges. And we got to grow. We need new flyovers. But we have been taken hostage by a company, and it's just like the medical field. We let's raise money for cancer cureness. Stop right there. You're lying. You ain't raising money to cure cancer. 
you're raising money to treat cancer. You want to make it easier to live with it because if we cure it, guess what happens? The money stops. We, we lose a shit ton of money. Tech stock milks the shit out of every job because it may take two years. Let's make it last three so we can keep paying everybody. Screw the citizen. To hell with gridlocking half the town on a Saturday and Sunday weekend. Oh, we're going to have a bike race, too, right there near the same corridor. That's outrageous. I couldn't agree with it more. And I don't want to punch Ron. I don't know. Maybe the city council. I don't know. Maybe they have. Maybe there's nothing that they can do against Mighty Tech Dot. I don't know. But the hamstringing of this town is outrageous. I, I don't even. To me, I. You screw the businesses more than anything. Because if there's sure. any, if there's anything that They're you want to down yeah, because of this. yeah if you're, there's anything you want to do in that area you're just not going to go because it's too much of an ass whip so you right. you not only screw the you know the people that have to get on the road no matter what mm -hmm. but the businesses in that area who's going who's going over there during you're not going, going to you're not going you're to. not LG did you miss the start of the game no but you barely made it. Well, no, my call time is like four hours before first pitch, Oh, well, that, so, yeah. finally that was a good thing One for one. Yeah, yeah, that actually right. was good. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's a good punch. That's a good punch. I want to punch O.J. Simpson for murder. <gasps> Allegedly. We're not doing this. We're not? Go ahead. I'm going to hear you out first. That's it. O.J. Simpson murdered two people in 1994, and he now that he's dead, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So you were gonna goodbye, pick. Twitter world. We're gonna <laughs> are we gonna pick and choose when the judicial system of this great country is spoken? It's I piece? can still give my opinion on the judicial system. Which, by the way, you talk about a fucked up system. How many people have been put to death that were innocent? Right, lots. Thank right. God for See what DNA. I'm yeah, yeah. Thank God. OJ killed him, folks, and got away with it. He played the system. Just because he played the system, don't mean he didn't kill them, folks. No, he did. That's it. We can get back to we, we didn't even we 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 didn't talk about OJ. If the Friday. glove don't fit. Oh my God! That's I'd like to punch quick. OJ also uh -oh. <gasps> for giving the Kardashians a claim to fame. That's on him. Well, was it OJ LG or was OJ. it the sex tape? Mm, OJ. It was OJ. It. They helped because yeah, the name was already famous, and then once the sex tape released, it put him into that uber famous yeah. category. Well, I, okay, I, I'm gonna defend OJ a little bit. He was buddies with Robert Kardashian. They, yeah, were, they were very buddies. good friends. That whole thing split the family up. So, yes, did Robert use his relationship with OJ and then subsequent being he was on he was, you know, he was on the damn jury. I mean, he was on he was on the law team. But it was on Robert who allowed that thing to get out of hand, his family scene. So I, I hear well, you, so it's kind of backdoory, but I didn't mean I didn't mean for that to well, happen. It's, yeah, it's a very like chicken OJ. in the egg situation. Right. Do do they become famous if OJ doesn't allegedly murder those people? Probably not. It's because not a, Robert is not alleged, famous. LG. He didn't murder them. Okay. Well he, 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 he was he, well, he was he was okay. accused. Well, poor OJ. He went to alleged, heaven, yeah. never having never First having found all, the real let's, killers. Let's be clear about something. <laughs> As the spokesperson for the uh -oh. black delegation. Oh, okay. We never rocked with OJ. OJ didn't want anything to do with black folks, so we didn't. We didn't rock. When with he OJ. needed you, he did. Yeah, we rock. We were. We were going against the system. We're going against. Correct. We're Understood. going against seeing Rodney King get beat by twenty cops and they all get off. Terrible. We're. That's what we're raging against. Like nobody. We were never like. Yeah, OJ. Fuck OJ. You know what I mean? Like OJ was like. You know, OJ's like. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Right. Famous words from OJ Simpson. Yeah, so yeah. like screw it. It's like screw OJ. Yeah. But we're raging against the system. <laughs> the system. You know what I mean? So it yeah. was never us like, oh yeah, well, let's get behind OJ. No, who cares? It's right. about the system. So yeah. For sure. There's that. All right. No rough, tough, dirty. OJ is not Chloe's dad. I know that's been a long time rumor. Oh, Chloe Kardashian. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if OJ was popping Robert's old lady. And playing golf with Robert at the same time. And honestly, Robert probably be like, well. Chloe ain't got a, a, a speck of melanin in her. Besides Lamar and those French girls Montana are Armenian. and James Harden. That's why they get that complexion. Yeah. That all of, they yeah, look, yeah, they're Armenian. Not Robert was baby. Armenian. All right, thank you to Orlando. She ain't, got, she ain't got the black nose. Do you have a family situation as complicated as the O.J. Simpson, Nicole Brown, Robert Kardashian, God knows what they were doing all together, scene, and it's led to divorce and animosity and <laughs> resentment. 
uh, then you too can go find the best family lawyer in all of San Antonio, Texas, and it is at our boy Orlando Kelm. Call him directly at 210-775-4995 or email him directly. It's orlandokellaw at gmail.com, orlandokellaw at gmail.com. All right. OJ's a good lead into entertainment news. Ah, now, live Let's do from it. in the building, mm. a guy's mm. favorite segment, Mentertainment. My God, there's two of them now. <laughs> Here they are, Rudy J and Mike Taylor. All right, and unfortunately, with OJ's death, then, of course, you get people that want to dogpile the poor guy. Oh, yeah. Caitlin came out and said good riddance. Yeah. I, th- I Look, there was... How he probably banged Caitlin's look, wife. Let me tell you... Let me tell <laughs> That's you, Chris, right? Chris Jenner? Let, let me rank <laughs> celebrating of deaths in this country. Okay. Osama 1. OJ 2. I'm not... I don't, not me. Did you get that over the weekend? Like celebration? Like we don't, there's only a few deaths that we celebrated. Good riddance, bitch. Yeah, there's Osama Bin Laden and then there's OJ. Yeah. I'm talking about literal parades. Right. There was parades thrown for OJ getting died. Really? Where, that's, where that's, were that's, you that's, at this weekend? Where you must have really been I working. The, I was at the ballpark. LG, you didn't get the sense of a celebration? Uh, somewhat. I got the sense of a celebration. Oh, the Saudi, him too. What's his name? Uh, crazy, crazy dude. He was behind a bit. Uh, Saddam bin, Hussein. Bin yeah. Ein Lala Hussein. Oh, oh, Saddam Hussein. Yeah, oh, yeah. so there's Bin Laden, mm-hmm. Hussein, OJ. Poor Saddam. He got done dirty, though. I'm not going here with you, Mike. I didn't do this. Afghanistan did it. Why are you blowing me up? He didn't do it. Yeah, we just wanted this. this. This stuff. Bush wanted revenge because his daddy yeah. didn't get enough yeah, down in the Persian Gulf. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. right, man, I'm not yeah, mad at it. Somebody him. push my daddy, I'm going to get mad at him. You know? Blame 9 11 on Saddam. It's an excuse to get him out of power. He's right. like, what the fuck? I didn't do nothing. We're going to take your golden oil while we're at it <laughs> because we're the biggest thugs <laughs> in the world. Anyway, that's for a whole nother show. Nah, good time. No, we just get these stupid gossipy stories. What happened now? According to Blast. Blast. Mm -hmm. Hollywood rag. Okay. When OJ was in prison for the paraphernalia shit, where he oh yeah, when they got that was when they got him back for not for beating the murder trial. They got him for that. Well, he did hold a guy hostage over autographed pictures and shit, and he went to prison for that. OJ was known for being bisexual. Who ain't? Not me. I'm talking about. In I that, tried. I'm talking it, about in that world. The first 17 times, I'm like, okay, I, this ain't for me. You know what? <laughs> Give me some chun chun. In that world, I think all them dudes are. You get so rich. I'm not, and just, I'm not shocked that maybe it, you just get so rich and famous, and you're hanging out with a bunch of famous rich people, and y'all just get so carefree because you feel like you've just conquered life. Everybody just gets horny and whatever. Turn the lights out, and it's a free for hole. Well, see, that's what they. I said. don't know. That's what they're alleging that. Yeah. The one time great producer Puff Daddy would do, he would drug the dudes, mm-hmm. have one of his boys rape the dude, mm-hmm. wake up in the morning and say, Hey, man, you're going to sign this terrible contract with me. And yeah. he's like, No, I'm not. And then Puff turns on the tape, showing you having male on male sex. Sure. Blackmailing you, sign the deal, or, right. I, or I'm going to release this tape. Yeah, he blackmailed him. He was blackmailing him. He black dick and then blackmailed him. After he would drug him. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, he would. My fault. But that's what he's saying he did. So am I sh- would I be shocked if OJ went both ways? Well, no. see, OJ wasn't having, if this is true, OJ, Nobody hit OJ the hole was, like OJ in his prime. That's right. And OJ was not having to drug nobody. It wasn't a setup. You never know, dude. He's having these coke parties all night right. long. It's big free for all. It's an orgy and a big swingers party and it's shit. It's called and, cocaine. And by four a.m., do you even care anymore who's yes, touching you? Yes, I mean, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I give a shit who's touching me. I don't even want man feet around me, so let alone. OJ would only do that with mixed couples. What do you mean mixed? Women had to be in the mix too. Oh, I thought you meant like he might let you touch it, black and fellas, white. but. There had to be girls involved, too. He was discriminatory about... He was very... He picked and choosed when he rolled both ways. That, sir, so is not a threesome. Prison. That's a train. No, no, but 
the OJ was doing things oh, with everybody. Oh, this is a prison. No, 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 no. Oh. Here's where I'm going. Whilst OJ was fine with that bisexual activity with like-minded, rich, famous people in the orgy rooms and clubs and shit. Yeah. He was not down in prison and let it be known to oh. the guards, hey, I don't do that in here with these fools. <laughs> and he, it, apparently, according to Blast, when he was in prison, he made, it, he made it be known that he did not want any men touching him, like trying to hug him or high, even dap him up or just hang with him because he did not want to get aroused and give them the wrong idea because OJ got turned on by dudes too. I used to suck dick for coke. <laughs> kind of like Ricky Martin on stage. Right. He won't be able to control yeah. himself. So don't come. I don't want to be with y'all. So I don't want you to get the wrong impression. See, that's come on. That comes out that two days after he's dead. That's, that seems unfair to do, to smear the guy. Well, nobody cares you know, about smearing OJ. I know, but now that he's, I mean, couldn't even let him rot for two days. Oh, gay sense. Okay, man. Jesus, that's unfortunate. Man. That's ridiculous. By the way, Man Entertainment is being brought to you by the Real estate office of Rebaldo, Jay Rebaldo. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> We're going to hang out with Jay tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah, you coming? The Fiesta thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Drake and Rick Ross are now dissing each other back and forth. Yeah. See, I again, I always want to call bullshit on these rappers that get into these fake beefs wow. now. This is not the 90s. These are not legit beefs. Oh, look, remember we covered the J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar thing a few weeks ago? They've now come out and said, oh, we made up. Bullshit. Y'all wanted to bump the needle for a couple weeks, sell a record. Now y'all have made up. These are, well, these I are like weak it when ass disses, I like it man. when it it's stays in the booth. Like I don't pro want, wrestling. I don't want Pac and Biggie all over. I don't want anybody no, to no, die. No, no, I know. You're right about that. So now baby, it's, baby. it's Drake and that great big fat Rick Ross. Fat. Yeah, Rick Ross said that Drake got a nose job. And he also said Drake had a fake six pack, which is why Drake is wearing all these weird costumes on stage to hide his botched six pack surgery. Oh, yeah. You're Drake. Can't you go get the best in the world? Dude, I, man, these guys, they're trying to distract us from the puff case. I think they're all in on it. So here's the deal. So hey, Rick, I, you I, like Rick Ross? I love both of them. I love Drake. I love Rick Ross. I love J. Cole. Not too big on Kendrick. Rick Ross is, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, 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 go deeper. Oh. Uh, uh, come on, deeper. Dig deep. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, that's better. Oh. Uh, uh, Oh, okay. It gets a little bit better. We're going. And Drake's that fucking poser from Canada, dude. What is I'm wrong? Team, I'm Team Rick Ross. I don't love. Him. What I is like, wrong with Drake? I love I, Drake. I think, I think I like I like some of his tunes, but he's not. He ain't, he ain't legit. Legit in what fact? He's never. He's not a gangster rapper, Mike. No question. He's a lover boy. Clearly, he didn't start from the bottom. No, he started from the. He was in a wheelchair on a Nickelodeon show. LG. That's from the bottom. No, weren't his no parents attorneys <laughs> in Toronto know. or something? His dad definitely wasn't an attorney. Well, I don't know. He might have been. That was so that was racist. Rick is now dissing Drake in a tune called "Champagne Moments" in response to a song called "Push Ups." <laughs> it sounds so funny when you read it because it can tell like you're like I don't know what this is. I'm just reading it. I'm <laughs> going you by. Heard? I'm have you going by to the note. No, but I have lyrics I've pulled. Okay, whose lyrics are you going to read? This is Rick Ross okay. dissing Drake. <clears throat> I'm quoting a man. Well, be careful. I know. All right, you be careful. I, I'm, I need to I'm be not so gonna, careful, I'm going to put my glasses yeah, on not, so I don't I'm make not a gonna, mistake. I'm not going to defend you if you drop an N-bomb, so be careful. You ain't never want to be a N-bomb anyway, N-bomb. That's why you had an operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows N-bomb. So I say he's trying to be white, make his nose smaller. Well, his mom is white. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he's not trying to be white. He's not. He's actually 50-50. His pops is black. His mom is white. What I don't. Correct. And I love Rick, but I don't know what Rick's getting at. Like, he's white. What you say about my mom? Well, you black. You well, are what your daddy is. I was is. told that if you're part black, you're all black in America. When you're pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> So Rick then eventually posts another video where he says he may record another track called Who Knows. Another pun, get it? Who Knows? Who N-O-S-E, Who Knows? Hmm. Another pun aimed at 
the supposed plastic surgery he says that Drake's got. I don't think Drake had a nose job. And if he did, what is that? Well, I don't get how that's a diss. What if he was trying to fix a what if it was a balloonoplasty trying to get better? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And of course now Drake came back with a lyric saying that Rick's had like He's had fat surgery. What is well, that? he says he's on, he says he's, he says he's delirious because he's on Mangiano. What is that? That's the fat shot. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I thought Ozempic was whatever. And Mon, Monja, Monjaro. Okay. Kill a Monjaro. I love these hip hop segments when you're reading the lyrics. I, just, this I is wish not we could my play background. It. This sucks. I know it does. Stupid suck. licensing. Stupid LG. He won't let us. No, why it. would I? Know, I, I don't, don't want to lose kidding. no money. No, I know. No. I don't either. Sons of bitches. I don't want to lose no money. All right. But uh, Drake, I like Drake's response to Kendrick. The push-ups was decent. He came. He came at Kendrick's head. It was. It was solid. Yeah, it was and a then solid they made diss track. No, that was cold. Way to bump y'all's music no, for two Drake, weeks. No, Drake. Drake came at Kendrick. He came at Future. He did. Mm-hmm. He, he, he took a diss at John ja Moran. Yeah. By the way, if there's any other popular podcast in this country that want to diss us and do a bit to bring us up, by all means, yeah, let's get us. into it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Just don't it. try to, don't say we're, you know, copyright infringing and try to steal our money. Then LG's coming for you. I've done it before. I've done bits with other radio hosts that, were, that are popular in other parts of the state just to get a rise out of them so I can get some Did notoriety. Did Any of them yeah. work? Yeah. Yeah. We got we got on the map in Houston when I was screwing around with Adam Clanton, who used to oh. be the, he did afternoon drive on uh, the Clear Channel station in Houston, and I was calling him a douchebag and screwing with him and stuff. And and he he, he prank took, called his show. He took the bait, took the bait and ran with it, and that's how we got on the map. Now he we're did. now we're buddies. We we like rappers doing a bit for, to bring each other up. I got him a little notoriety in San Antonio. He got me a little notoriety in H-Town. It worked out great for both of us. Good for him. Now we laugh about it. All right, so there's my entertainment news presented by Jay Rabaldo. And by the way, Rudy and I, the thing we're going to tomorrow is for the public. And they so they've opened up 1604 now. It's only on the only weekends on the weekend. where they screw right, us right, over. Right, right, right. Uh, it's right there by 1604 in Vance Jackson. Just across from the rim... There's a Starbucks right there on that corner. There's a Circle K. It's right behind the Circle K, big uh, Keller Williams City View office. Out in the parking lot tomorrow night, they're going to have like a little fiesta party. It is Food fiesta trucks time. and stuff for your kids and stuff. And me and Rudy are going to go out there and hang out for an hour or so. Go see Jay and his Come beautiful meet Jay. teeth. Come meet Jay and his beautiful white teeth with the Ribaldi, Ribaldo Realty Group. At 210-887-1081 or you can direct email Jay at jribaldo. At KW.com. I think Jay had a sale over the weekend if I was following his social club. I think right. he had a claim or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it yeah. might have been a sales sale. You're yeah. welcome, Jay. I'm, we'll take full credit for that. Absolutely. <laughs> Jay's like, I was actually working on that before I met you. Well, or was he? I'm going to need to see some dates on that, Jay. Me too. So you're welcome on that. So if you are in the market for maybe, it's okay, this is, okay, got, got tax return. Got, I'm ready to put down something or at least see what I've got. Go talk to Jay and see what you are in the market for if you're ready to go buy a home. Or maybe you got some land, ready to build some. Maybe you're one of the millions of people in this country now that have multiple homes and you rent them out for extra money, like a side, make a side hustle being a, you know, renting your property. Um, LG was going to do that at some point, rent this house out, and then COVID hit and kind of got bogged down with that goal. But if you're ready to do that, Whatever it might be, if you need a real estate agent, the official real estate agent of Thunderdome is is our, or is our guy, Jay Ribaldo. All right. We have a members only today at 1015. If you're watching or listening to this show live, just be advised. We have so much more to get to. We haven't even revealed the Masters winners. Uh, but coming up in the, in the members only, we're going to go over who won the Masters challenge, mm-hmm. add up all the money. NBA playoffs are getting up and rolling. Many other topics we want to get into in the members only. But right now, um, you mentioned the NBA playoffs are indeed nigh upon us, which means the Spurs season is over. Victor Wimbenyama has finished one of the great rookie seasons (laughs) of all time. There's just no arguing about that. Only player in NBA history with 1,500 points, 250 blocks, and 100 three-pointers in a single 
season. Make the case for me. Thank you. Go right no, ahead. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a I'm Spurs a, team that has gotten in the last I'm 60 look, days. I'm looking, for these, I'm looking for more stats since that's what we've become. The Spurs have become high, way better competitively in the last 60 days. For sure. They have not been blown out even any in, in, in any of their losses. Beat Denver. Had good Didn't win Didn't they there. go 500 in March? I think they did. I think I they did. They, they beat Oklahoma City. In, the, in that last month, they just beat Denver. And it wasn't like Denver was mailing it in. Denver was fighting for a one seed and played all their regulars, and the Spurs still beat them without Devin Vassell. You give me all that shit how what? Oh, look, the Spurs won 25 games last year without Wimby. Well, Vassell ain't played in three weeks, and the Spurs have been as good as they've been all year. It goes both ways. It is about who can fit in with Wimby. Mamu, Skittish was saying, that the sky is not even the limit with Wimby. Space is the limit with him because he's an alien. Get it? Did the alien bit. But it's true. Wimby has a chance to be one of the greatest players we've ever seen. And like I have said all year long, now we're to the part that this actually, I'm almost as interested in this summer as I am the offseason. What did Brian Windhorst say? I haven't seen He spent him. some time with Brian Wright. Failed GM to this point okay. of the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, now, I don't know if Brian Wright is his source, but according to Windhorse, he doesn't expect the Spurs to make those any drastic moves this summer. Meaning, what does that mean? I don't think they're going to go after Trey Young. Okay. They're not going to go after Kevin Durant. Is DeJounte Murray drastic? Mm, I wouldn't count him as drastic. No, I, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think so. You're and talking then, about like super duper stuff. And the thing about it is with this kid, this high school kid that's going to go to Duke next year, he's got to play his one year. Who's Duke, that? I'm, so, I'm, talking to, I'm speaking of the guy, Cooper Flagg. Oh, seven, white boy from Maine? Seven footer. Yeah, can yeah. do it all. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him. I'm not against, like, <laughs> the clock is ticking. Wimby wants to win. But I wouldn't be upset if they found a way to get Cooper Flag. But that would mean another year of this. Because he's coming out next. Yeah, right? he's got to play. He's got to play one year at Duke first. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. I wouldn't be mad at it if it happened organically, meaning like you know whatever happened, they just you know sucked again mm -hmm. and ended up because Cooper Flag after next year is going to be the number one overall pick. But, again, I don't know if I can stomach this again. I don't know if I can stomach 82 games of this. And the way they ended the season, I don't think it will be anyway. They look like they finally got on the same page and know what they need to do and kind of got that confidence that you need and kind of mm -hmm. figured out how to keep it close and win games. It took 82, but, you know, they seemed like to figure it out. But I would not be mad at all if they stumbled into Cooper Flag alongside of Wimby. That would be hell. They're still not. In a, a good way. Okay, they're still not. A coastal good weather team, Miami, L.A. They're not that. No. If you're not one of those three, superstars don't want to play for you. I don't give a shit what they think about Greg Popovich. Yeah, that's all. We found out that's it's all, all BS. bullshit. It's yeah. all BS. And that's that, and by the way, that's 95% of the teams in the league. It ain't just us. If you ain't Miami or one of the two L.A.s, the stars, if they play for you, it's just business and whatever. So, yeah, we're not going to go trade for LeBron. We're not going to go trade for Giannis. Not going to draft Bronny so we can get LeBron. Correct. We're not doing. We're not going to do a bit. But what they have to do is be ruthless with the roster, like I have said all year long. What, get rid of the fat? Get rid of the fat and not be, fat. Afraid, not be afraid to get better no matter who it costs you on the current roster. If it's Devin Vassell, bye-bye, Felicia. If it's Keldon Johnson, bye, Felicia. They have got to be very ruthless. This might be the most challenging offseason they've had in 20 plus years. I know, matter of fact, I know it is. It absolutely sure. is. Because you have to be, while knowing we're not going to go bring in, you know, we're not going to get Jason Tatum from the Celtics, you have got to go and be as smart with who you bring in to match up with this kid, the, the alien, as you've ever been with Tim. For years, it was, okay, we only bring in guys who can work with Timmy. Same thing now with Wimby. And who those identifying who those players are, and then how do we go get some of them, this is going to be the most challenging offseason for your, for your guy Brian Wright and Greg Popovich 
that they have ever had. It's a hell of an offseason. I'm excited. Can't wait for it. Got two number one draft picks. I know it's a shitty draft. But yeah, it's a pretty shitty this draft. is going because it's time to go try. Well, Let's go get 40 wins next year. How do we do that? It's only 15 is, more. I, hearing Brian Windhorst say that after talking with Brian Wright is a little disheartening when I see the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are by the numbers the youngest team in the league, win the West, and they won it because they they drafted Giddy, they drafted Chet, but they went out and got a huge trade in going to get Shea Gilgis Alexander. So just that one piece alongside of Wimby mm-hmm. and maybe a Vassell, so it's kind of disheartening because it's like, okay, look, they're showing us, Oklahoma's showing us, mm-hmm. if you get a good, you get your Jalen Williams, you get you a, a Giddy, you get your Chet, and then you go and make a nice trade for Shea Gilgis, you can, you can turn it like that. Yeah. So it's a little disheartening to hear that they're not going to go after, they're not going to make any big moves because we've seen what it's done for the Thunder in a short period of time. Well, just because Brian Windhorst said It doesn't matter. That. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. And you don't know what's going to present. It's just it weird presents. timing. I don't believe in coincidences. Mm-hmm. And it's weird for him to say that after I know he spent time with Brian Wright. But Pop said yesterday, honestly, I could use about a week and a half break and then I'm ready to get it back to the season. They're hyped. They're fired up for what they've seen. Yeah, I got you. Cool. Now go upgrade the roster. It may just be one guy they bring in that can make the difference. That's what I'm saying. Like Shea Gilchrist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Find out who that is. How do we get that dude and make it happen at all costs? Boucher, to me, is my MVP. Him or Luca. That's it. We're done. For now. For now. 15-minute break. We're right back. All right. Slacker Saturday, 3 to 5, Medical Center. We got a whole week of broadcasting, though, to hype that. 15 more minutes from now, it is a members-only edition. It's only 6 bucks a month. Become a member right now on YouTube. Love you hard. See you in a minute. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.